going. <laughs> Glory be to God. Again, I pray all is well with each one of you, uh, brothers and sisters who is joining us right now. Um, we are going to be ready to open up with a word of prayer. Then um, we'll get into our word. And first, before we that, I'd like to share something with you, a part of my testimony as well. So if you're driving right now, um, with all due respect to your safety, you have to keep your eyes on the road, but you can give your heart to the Lord. If you're free to, you can bow your heads in reverence. And if that is not your movement, just also open up your heart to the prayer of the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, as always, I come to you needing you. Before we can do any delivering, I pray that you pour into me the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of truth. I ask that you be with me. I pray that I give myself over to you in obedience and, and, and decreasing, that you can increase me, not just for this moment, for the moments going forward, Father God. I pray right now that we are gathered in your name, Lord Jesus, as you said in your word in Matthew 18, 20, with two or more gathered in your presence, in your name, that you are amiss. So I ask that I have at least one more believer with me that calls upon the Lord, sir, sir, Jesus. And I pray that right now our families are covered. I pray that right now our friends are covered. I pray that right now the word will be wisdom to us and that we will have the mercy of you, the grace of you, the favor of you and deliverance. I pray that this wisdom will not go back void and return to you, that someone will hear you, that their hearts will be open to receive you, and that there will be a change, a transformation. And Father God, if not in them, in myself. I ask that you give God speed and travel mercies to those who are on the road traveling, who are still taking the time out to hear from you. I pray for those who want to be there with you, but are obligated somewhere else that you can still pour into them somehow a transform, transparent or transcending word that have reached them where they are at right now. And someone can deliver to them just by message and that we all can be a tool or a vessel. But what we hear tonight can be used to uh, glorify your kingdom, to expand your kingdom here on earth. So thank you, Father God, for your presence. And I pray that right now we will go forth in your word and we will become joyous in peace while we hear and listen to the word of God. Amen. 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 Oh, somebody else knock an amen in there. Hey, now I see you. Okay, brothers and sisters, like I say, so if you are new um, to the word and for those who uh, may see receive the word later on through the YouTube channel, Rebirthing Visions, glory be to God. This is a... <clears throat> semi-interactive word study that being that um you will see me sometime in humor mute those who come on if they're not muted only not because i like to hear myself speak but for the fluency of which the word is delivered but you can utilize your chat um ability where you can have any comments any questions any uh, glorifications to God, any testaments that's in your heart or anything that you may be relevant that you want to share. And I always look over myself and we can look over together as a brother and sister family. OK, so again, tonight, um, parenting with God, I, I mentioned uh, a second I was going to share some transparency. And this is the not really the first full time and I'm not going to go into everything um, because it was very difficult for me and I'm still in that stage. Right. So most of you may have heard me say that I don't always know what the Lord is going to deliver me with word he want to use. And honestly, I was coming up with work today, which I was using work as an escape mechanism because I'm having issues with one of my children. Um, and I was going to go to, I was looking for old, old, old service that we never even went over it was, uh, in, the, in the beginning that only a couple people were there. And God said, no, I want you to speak on parenting with God. And of course, how he is that in the midst of your struggle, he wants to use whatever you're dealing with, not just for those you, but also for myself, because I didn't really want to come to terms with this word. Right. And I've been receiving in this situation, just some backdrop. Like I said, um, I am a father of six growing kids from 24 to my youngest is 10, three girls, three boys, uh, two grandkids. Right. Um, one of my daughters now, um, preteen and she's going through, I, I, I guess I want to admit preteen issues, but as a father, a loving father, you know, I'm not there, you know, me and her mother are divorced. Um, I've been feeling weight of failure, absentee, 
I've been feeling some of my own personal trauma, but more importantly, wanting to be there for my child, you know, and I was angry when I got a report from the schools and everything yesterday, and, and I don't deal with that well. I had to take a day to process, couldn't really talk or, you know, things of that nature, and again, I'm still hurting because when I hear what was going on, it's not, no, you don't want to hear that, and I just, sometimes I look back to where I was at, like, man, the grief I put in my parents, or my sister reminded me today, one of my sisters, you know, um, how when she was growing up, I didn't, I didn't like that with her, but I was in the streets knee deep, but I didn't want to see my sister making choices, right? So it hurts, right? So I said, I'm not trying to get too far into it because I'm still a little emotionally attached and I'm not um, covering up as much, but I don't really want to go into that hole. But I still wanted to share with you as my family for why this word, it wasn't much as a struggle. It was a necessary um, um for me to be a necessity of obedience and for the Lord to truly use me when I don't have the words to speak to you if you was just kicking it, right? Because I don't really want to talk to anybody. So God said, get past yourself. Let's heal you and prayerfully put some wisdom and can heal others and their families and, 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 and just guide each other, right? So we're going to, we are going to get into the word. Um, as you seen by the title is parenting with God. And there are a few subcategories and we're going to start and how the Lord presented it, um, so to speak, is uh, like the, uh, not life cycle, but like, you know, the the age span thing, you know, how we have it. Excuse me, excuse me I have some people trying to join on and, it, and it's one part of me. I usually don't do this, but I have one brother who's trying to join who hasn't been on with us and he's waiting for me. Let me just get him. I'm sorry, because we definitely would like to get him on. Use... Uh, and, and and peace live you on there as, as curls trying to get on trying to get him on he said wait for the meeting to start but i don't know if you can text him and let him know so we can keep the word going now oh man and it is tawana saying in the waiting in waiting room for arrival pardon me let's see what's happening here pardon me one time we'll get right back to the word let's make sure nobody's having to wait i don't really like that how do we do that? How do we? Um, I don't want no one having to wait in the waiting room. One second, brothers and sisters. We got one chat. I don't know. See, forgive me why she's having to wait in the room participants did anyone else have any issue with getting on and uh, you can unmute yourself waiting for the host uh, like that no nah, we have a issue that's cool let me see a oh, host let me see some host me spotlight for everyone my tawana i'm not sure what's going on we're going we all gonna get right back to work but she was saying that she has an issue and Curl said he has an issue with getting on, waiting for the host. Okay, hold on. Enable waiting room. No, nah, I don't want to allow muting. Allow you got the right code. No, nah, they, they should, though. Let me see. I'm going to enable waiting room. Then I'm going to probably use the first one. You'll probably use the first one. Yeah, probably. Let me make sure that they're on the second one. Again, pardon itself. Yeah, that's probably what it is. And we're going to get back into it. I definitely don't want to deny no one. Oh, we don't. We're making it personal right now. And I'm glad everyone on here is personal. So, um, right, so right. Curls, use the second. I sent you two passcodes. You got to you got to use the second yeah. one. And my said he didn't get it. It, but he right here, let me send it to Emma. I, I forgot to send him. So use the second. Oh, you can send it to him. Yeah, he says he, he right here, though. So he, he watching with me. So No, no, but you're probably trying he to. He says send it to him next though. Wednesday. Make sure. I got him. All right, just look. I got to get Make back sure to send, send it to you again. Just send the information. I'm about to send it to you again. Put that in. All right. Yeah, I'm all right. You'll agree. I got you, brother. <laughs> That was my fault. Glory be to God. We're going to get everybody good. 
Tawana should be able to wait for Aunt Susan. Okay, and let me just make sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't want to hold everyone up. I know your time is valuable. It should still be on. They should be able to get on. I think that's what it is. It's just they got to put the right information in. Right? All right. I'm going to keep him close. Let's just get, we're gonna still going to get ready to get into the word, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> so like I said, um, Right now, oh, oh, pardon Cam, I got to um, throw the mute on there, bro. So the first section that we want to, oh, I left off talking about, you know, like I said, the age categories, not age span, you know, like how we have um, from uh, newborn or really before birth, newborn, then you have your toddlers and we have the preteen section, teenager section, and ultimately adult, right? So, and I want you, I pray that um, as we are here, um, if each one of us are, are brothers or, or parents, excuse me, or if you're not a parent, a grandparent, if you're just a child yourself, and even if you were knowing you're a child of God, that you can see yourself more as parenting, but also understanding how we are, especially in the adult aspect of it. So I kind of like, I have a little trepidation because I, I, I do want to see my sister and, and, and curls get on here, but I definitely don't want to hold the team up of uh, brothers and sisters. So give me one second. Uh, let me try to call T to see if she's okay. Oh, she's on. That's Curls. You doing. forgot to tell me where to go oh. to. No, no, you got it. All right, all right. That's you. All right, because Curls, I, and I heard a little, I heard a little, little drink on his voice. I heard a little frustration, a little drink. Right, we're, gonna, we're gonna pray it away. We're gonna pray it away. You're gonna give us a good message. Oh, no, I'm just saying, I want Curl to get on. So he, maybe that's a part of him not getting on because he may be trying to log on to something else. But let's get to the word. I was waiting on you. Amen. All right, you mute. You, ain't you didn't have to mute me. I can mute myself. Oh my Let me turn this up. I can know how to mute me. Right now, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. I got him. All right, brother, since we get back into it, right? So, again, any other interruptions, I, I'm going to stop if Curl do, because, again, I would like for him to be on, um, despite whatever he got going on. But let's get into the work. So, the first category we was talking about as we dealing with parenting with God, right, is the promise and purpose, promises and purpose from the womb, right? And that's why I was saying it's not just newborn, it's from the womb. So always remember that we, for substantiation, we always using the word of God, right? Coming from the device, it's still the word of God. The, 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 the NIV, the translation, still the word of God. It's nothing that I'm going to do except be expressive and articulative to the word of God, but I'm not adding and I'm not taking nothing from it. And, and, and I pray that I don't get off course from the word of God, right? So let's see what the word of God has to say about the promises and purposes that are from the womb. Because this is where those, this was parenting starts off at, right? And for us, okay, once again, before we get so far into the word, before we hear this, I pray and add to the prayer that there's no condemnation over any one of us, even if we hear the word, right? And, 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 and let's say we haven't lived up to that word yet. Or we have kids that are, already adults kids that may not be oh they still coming kids that may not be oh. with us right um um let's let's say that we have been past our prime of the newborn stage but there's no condemnation in what we didn't do especially if it wasn't brought up into us and planted in us to be raised up in it. That's why we're talking about parenting with God, but we were the newborn. We were the toddler. We were the preteen. We were the teen. We were now, oh, excuse me. We are now adults preferably, right? Most of us. So at each stage, even if we bypassed it, we still can retain what the Lord was speaking. And more importantly, if you don't even have your child right now, your child's adult out the house and you like, well, this word may not be, you get the word of God, never just for self. It's also to retain it 
to live by it and pass it along. You may be with a brother or sister that's lost, a young one that you can teach to, and you want in your heart. You may have a good heart and want to teach them something because of your experiences, but if you're not going to have what you teach them rooted in the foundation of the word, all you're going to do is give them the best of you. And if the best of you had you messed up, right, you're going to give them a messed up version of the best of you because the best of you is all you see. But we give them the best of God that's within us based on our experiences, based on the new wisdom that we had to go through through pains, based on the new wisdom that is given to us each day with our, um, and I, excuse me for the word, not failures, right? Because that's the enemy and myself, right? Not failures and our shortcomings sometimes as parents and our insufficiencies as parents sometimes and our inabilities as parents and our traumas as parents and our generational curses as parents right and and in a, and, and and even in the lack of self work we may see ourselves right now some of us are parents by default some of us are parents by uh, uh bad choices some of us are parenting on autopilot everybody's not parenting with God Right now, you may hear the word where you at, and if you haven't been parenting with God, you're going to see yourself not with the word. You're going to see yourself outside of the word, but you have to now, it's a new day. You can now take the old you and put it with the new you and walk towards it. Because that's what this word is about. Not condemnation. Through the belief of the Lord and the Savior, we get convicted. Right. So even now, if you don't have that belief upon the Savior, there's still going to be some good words. I pray so. Right. I pray that I can just shoot to shoot my shot with the word. And, and in your earthly vision that you're going to be like, oh, man, he can talk, man. I hear you hear something because that's still a seed planted. You just may not understand it yet. So sometimes you got to be relative to a person and meet them where they are at. But we're going to get into the word. First stage again. The promises and purpose from the womb. First word, Job chapter three, verses 11 through 19, right? Job chapter three. Now, most of us, if you haven't, and I, I don't want to be an assumptive um, deliver of the word and, and, and think that everyone knows everything, because sometimes you may just get on here right now and this is be new to you. So I'm not going to still spend so much time back there because I pray that there is consistency here that you may have heard me speak of certain things and the Lord has used me. And you're like, oh, I remember that character. I remember that story. So we don't have to go so deep. So Job, we know he, he was the righteous man of his time, most righteous man considerably at his time, who God had 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 his hand on in favor, but also uh, authorized the adversary, the accuser to do his bidding on Job and started taking things from him, took his kids, took his wealth, all kind of stuff. So right here, we get into Job chapter three, just the third chapter in, he was starting to feel the pressure, like some of what I was just feeling, not to what he lost, but I was under that same despair. Well, let's see what he was saying. Now remember, he's a man righteousness of knowing purpose before all of this happened. But sometimes life gets on you and then you can forget. So let's get into it. Let's put my man up. Chapter 3, 11 through 19. Why did I not perish at birth and die as I came from the womb? Why were there knees to receive me and breasts that I might be nursed? For now I'll be lying down in peace. I will be asleep in that rest. With kings and rulers of the earth who built for themselves places now lying in ruins with princes who had gold, who filled their houses with silver. Oh, why was I not hidden away in the ground like a stillborn child, like an infant who never saw the light of day? That's Job talking. That's a man who's righteous talking. He was under so much despair, he forgot his purpose. He went back to the womb. Man, what was I doing here, man? Why did this go on to me? Sometimes we feel that way. Why did this happen? Job's kids got taken. Job's land. Why did this happen? Why did you, you should have just kept me from being born. Glory be to God that that wasn't how he ended up. That's just where he was. Right? Because we should know the story that he was restored and got back to being a parent. And 
a lot of times what we have to see in the world tells us we are not just physical parents. That's why it's parenting with God. This is more than just my personal testimony. I was sharing a little bit about my daughter. This is more than just your personal blood kids. This is parenting with God. And if we know the words, it says that God's family is all those who serve the will of him. So therefore we got children. There are children out there who are lost that we know from the neighborhood. There may be children. We go to the sin, little girls that you, uh, sisters, you may go to the Salon with that you parenting ain't there that you can drop a jewel on and spend some time with and pour into. Why you think sometimes you go to church they say hey mother, and it still bugs me out. And I, and one of this a, there is a, a one of my his day day's not here but his dad uh uh his pop Daryl and his mom Mama Linda like you know I had two moms already still here. Hey God you give me another mom but Mama Linda they just like adopted so it's in a family. And they look at me like a son. I'm 46 with grandkids. So sometimes in the Lord's family, you're still going to be a parent with God. So sometimes when I go to them, they got to see in me. Pop Darrell, for instance, I told you a little bit about what was going on with me yesterday. I didn't even talk to him. My brother, Ray, who my mentor and I work with in my business, you know, in his business when we do construction and everything. He was there for me. He wanted to meet me where I was at yesterday going through my pain, but I'm not really big on all of that, right? Like, I'm still going. I'm still healing. I'm not because I don't like to take things out on others when I'm still processing. And that's this and, and trying to still receive the Lord. But he was had it in motion. Man, pray for him. Pray for this because I'm dealing with a child issue. So at that moment, I really can't parent with God because right then I'm still trying to parent under emotion. So I had to remove myself and not do too much parenting because I got another parent that I got to try to talk to and I'm emotional and I'm angry, not just at them, I'm angry at myself. So my brothers had to get together without me knowing and and, and they brothers, like I said, brother Ray, right? And they hit the other brothers, right? But then he hit Pop Darrell and I said, so he called him and he put a powerful prayer. That that they're doing it, but see how he, I respect him as a pop. When he heard that his son in faith was hurting, he prayed for his son. I had to call him. Sometimes you got to pray for your child, but that's one of them later. That's one of them later. We don't get to, we ain't gonna go, oh, oh my Lord. I told you I wasn't feeling it, but the spirit do. I haven't even got too deep yet. I, we, we didn't get started. Joe, you seen what he was in. Let's move on. Psalms chapter 22, verse 10. Glory be to God. Psalms chapter 22, verse 10. From birth, I was cast on you. From my mother's wombs, you have been my God. Now we're starting to get in some of that positivity, Sabbath, affirmative word. Not all the word is going to be downtrodden. Not all the word is going to be realistically checking us. Sometimes we need this encouraging word to remember who we are and who our children are. Because if we haven't noticed, that's why, why is the word of God important? Because we're raising kids out here, grandkids out here, and we want to do again for them. But sometimes what? We're going to give them just the best version of us, pulling from the fire box of, of, of the journey. But you can still pull from the fire box of the journey. But when that journey is matched up to God's understanding and his will, where you at right now, you now can get to the word and deliver unto them something new. Don't be jealous because you may not have got it. Don't be holding back because nobody may not have poured it into you or poured it into me directly. Let's not be so caught up in our trauma that we don't grow for the sake of others too and still heal ourselves, right? Okay. From birth, I was cast on you. From my mother's womb, you have been my God. Psalms chapter 51, verse 6. 51 verse 6. Carl still texting. One of you brothers check on him. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Remember? Promises and purpose from the womb. One of the beauty one of the beauties of a of a, of a relationship with the Lord and the Messiah, Yahshua, Jesus, the Christ. Personal is that once you have that, it's not just living in heaven and salvation. That that's comes. It's finally getting some type of intimacy here that will show you that 
This word is speaking unto me, not about me through them, not saying it like there was them and that's their life and that excludes me. No, no. The word of God is the father's word. The word of God became, what did John 1, 1 say? That in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And what did John 1, 14 say? And the word became flesh and we knew that the flesh was the son, right? So if you put those together, you know that this word is the Lord God himself. This is how we do it. So this is for us. This is the father speaking to us. Parenting. He's parenting right now with us. See, it wasn't Bible just us getting guidance. Parenting with God is let God parent to us right now. So sometimes we think we're going to get built for certain things. But right now we are children too. Amen. So what did our daddy say? What did Abba say? Right? He said, yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. That's from us. He desired faithfulness even in the womb. We failed. Cool. Through redemption, we can get back. Reconciliation. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. So just because he desired something we may have failed, he still taught us what? Wisdom. Each one of us has wisdom stored in us that we just have to remember and this word that's when the word becomes alive and you're like oh man i get it because he's speaking to us and you feel it you're not recreating anything you're just relearning what you already know through the word he already taught us this wisdom you got away from it and how do we know it's us because look who's on here right now amen and not saying those who couldn't make it but you are psalms chapter 127 verse 3 Psalms 127, verse 3. Children are a heritage from the Lord. Offspring a reward from him. I told you about one of my friends before, my man, Wise. Um, he's on his journey. Still love him. One thing, and it's not just him. It could be any one of us. One thing that a lot of us do will believe multiple, I, I'm not going to say just one, but it all it takes is one, multiple things about the word and then try to discredit something else. <laughs> like it didn't come in one package. Oh, I can't do the new -y. I don't do that New Testament when they put that together. That's the same. Hey, yeah, you put a part two with it. You, you, you know I mean? It's in the same book. How you want to believe and claim that you this and that? <laughs> But you want to deny that. Well, yeah, they added on that later. But they added it. If they did, they added it at the same time they added that. We ain't get one separate. So while I say that is, I want you to understand that no matter what has happened and how you have become a earthly parent, if you are a believer, no matter how you have got an adopted child, or grandchild. Children are a heritage from the Lord and offspring of a reward from him. So that is a reward to you. Whether you have one, had one, not there, it was a reward. He doesn't reward everybody. We're not talking about the pains of going. We're talking about the reward that was given. A lot of time, us, myself included, and my premarital counselor, Dr. Moore, who I see tomorrow, I'm not just shouting like he's a great dude, right? But he mentioned something about me and my character. And he says, man, Donnell, you had nothing to do with intelligence. He said, you a lot more accurate in identifying your negative issues and fixing them and less accurate and identifying your positive and God's affirmations. And I had to agree with him. I don't always see myself how the Lord see me. But I focus on wanting him to see me better. So I'm not losing, but I'm not a fully living either. Let's keep going. Psalms 139, chapter 13 Excuse me, chapter 139, verses 13 through 16. Right? 139, verses 13 through 16. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in that secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, 
Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How are you going to write in a book that's not formed? What did John 1 1 say? I would love to see um, the immediate growth and hit the hit the button, hit the type it in. I know some of you, you I bet you if it was a if it was an Instagram or or, or, or or top tick and all that stuff you do, you hit that fast. I love to see you remember what John 1 1 said when we just said it. In the beginning was what? The word, and the word was what with God, and the word was God. All the days ordained for me were written in your book. The book we talking about in the book of life, not just here, the book, his book, how you write it in there before one of them came to be because he becomes, everything comes from him. It's manifested. The invisible, invisible. That's how we have to see our children. There is something special in them. God placed something. Yahweh placed something in there. The Lord has placed something that I can't see yet. Why do I need to be a better parent so I can see with my inside of my child? Why do I need to be a better person so I can see what's inside of the child of other when their parents can't see him? Why they can't see him? Because they don't know the Lord. We can't be selfish. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 5. As you do not know the path of the wind or how the body is formed in a mother's womb, so you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. We want to reiterate, as you do not know the path of the wind, don't, don't listen to meteorologists and all them. You know they be guessing. They get an easy paper. Or how the body is formed inside of a mother's womb. I know we got, they have that technology now, right? With the 3D, the sonogram, and we're not going to get too far, of course, but hasn't man always been trying to play with God? If the Lord said you can't know how the body's formed in the muscles, what are we doing looking so far inside of there doing and trying to figure out, oh man, you see him and all that looking so close before he doing it. He's still working on that baby. You try, you, you, you can still see him and still don't see what the Lord is doing in that secret. See, he know what we're doing. He know we'll get them cameras and all that, but you still ain't see inside your child. You seen all the little developments. You seen all the little, oh, it's a boy and a girl early. You seen the head get big. Ain't that mine. But what you haven't seen was, don't I see that faith in there? Don't I see that purpose? Oh, ain't he going to Serve the Lord? Won't he be a giver? Won't he be a problem? You can't see that because you ain't in you. I'm not condemning. Jeremiah, prophet Jeremiah, chapter one, verse five. Let's do it verbatim. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Forgive me if you were on last week or the week before I mentioned when we were speaking on Joshua. And I said that was personal, but I had to share. Why did I say that? It's because although I read it to you and, and you get online and see it later, and it, I don't care. The Lord was speaking to me. Why? Because if you don't believe this prophecy spoken, I, I may have mentioned to you that I had a prophecy spoken on me in 2009. Um, in Charlotte, North Carolina by a bishop while I was still alcoholic womanizing. I had one spoken over me 2010 by my own Nana who's who's recognized, regardless of her earthliness, recognized as a woman of God with strong spiritual discernment and foundation. Um, and I can stamp, st stamp that. And she spoke the same prophecy that Bishop Lockett did, not verbatim, but the same course that there are going to be people who cannot... Uh, come to know the Lord Jesus until they meet me. Hallelujah, Zoom. Hallelujah, YouTube. They spoke that. God spoke that. But furthermore, when I was still struggling and getting to know Jesus, um, when I moved, it wasn't until I moved into my brother's toy house, one of my first place after my um struggle down here, coming back from New York, and God humbled me, and I moved to my place over here, and my brother toy, his sister came from Jamaica, and she was here, and before she left, um, she called me upstairs and said, the Lord told me to pray with you and speak something to you and help my arms and pray. And she's prayed and the, the word spoken on me was Joshua chapter one, verses five through nine and Jeremiah chapter one, verses four through nine. And we just read it. So I said, that's personal. This, we, this is what he said to me. 
So I take it different. He said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Glory be to God. That's how I feel. Not in glory for me. I said, glory be to God for the service that I would do. Why? Because we're still being parents. But this isn't just about that. See, that's just about purpose. We still got to get the parenting, right? But you got to identify a purpose. And somebody that may have knew that to me before could have got us. Maybe I got started early, but if that would have happened, maybe we wouldn't be doing this now. So let's move on. Romans chapter nine. Now we're in the new. Romans chapter nine, verses six to eight. It is not as though God's word had failed. For not all who are descended from Israel are Israel. Mm. And you have to know a little bit more to understand about Israel. Israel was not just the people. It was also the name given to Jacob who wanted the promises. You know that it was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he through his lineage in which everything came. But that's the one who wrestled with God and had a promise from birth in his womb with his brother. He had a twin, Esau. And when he came in, he was a Jacob. Was, the name Jacob is um, known as the deceiver, the trickster. He was... He's the one that stole his brother's blessings from his dad. And he's the one, when he came from the womb, was grabbing on the heel of his brother because the firstborn is the first one that should get the anointing. And he grabbed on the heel and popped out. He's supposed to be the firstborn, but he's popping up out of there. He's a deceiver. He's a trickster. That's the same one that wrestled with God and didn't want to let him go until he blessed him. And when he blessed him, he turned his name from Jacob to Israel. And when he blessed me, he turned my name from Sticky to Darnell and then from Darnell to Doc. And when he blessed you, he turned you to who? I don't know yet. You got to tell me. If you let our parent do his job. Nor because they are his descendants are they all Abraham's children. On the contrary, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. In other words, see, why is he saying through Isaac? So let me give you more backdrop. So let me just tell you what it says, right? He said, nor because they are his descendants are they all Abraham's children. Abraham is not just the father of faith. He was the promise that, that was given to him as an adult and told to leave his land was that he will be the father of many nations. All the descendants would be numerous in the sky. And he thought that as he knew his God, when he sent them, that promise was coming through his unborn son. Because at the time he made the promise, he was early out, out there, he was in the 80s. You know, I don't want to be telling you right now, but because he didn't have the baby, Isaac, he was 100. And Sarah, Sarah, excuse me, Sarah, I know you on there. Um, she because their name changed. It was Abram and then Abraham, Sarah and then Sarah, or Sarah and then Sarah. You know, they change. Names change when the law gets involved. Know that. Okay. But he thought that the, the, the promise for the purpose was coming through Isaac. But that's the same Isaac, his only son out of hundred, that he the Lord told him to put him, bring him up to the, the mountain and told him to sacrifice him. And he was about to go through it. He said, hold up, man. I see that you a man of faith. I got something waiting for you. That's when you heard about that ram in the bush. You ever heard that there's a ram in the bush? That's because the Lord got a sacrifice that he may tell you to make up already laid out, but he just want to see if you're going to be obedient. And because of that obedience, that the offspring, the descendants that he was talking to. So Abraham thinking he fathomed them, it was going to be through his son, but it wasn't just through his son. It was through his son who he was about to give up and that faith through his son now had made him the promise keeper even though he ain't see it we now are a byproduct of the promise keeper not by blood that's why it's okay to be a stepdad or stepmom it's okay to step in because it's not by blood it's, it's those who are, are chosen by god the one who gives children to him a reward so don't think that your position ain't solidified by god's eyes if man don't see you let's keep it going it is through isaac that your offspring will be reckoned in other words it is not the children by physical descent who are god's children but it's the children of the promise who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. Amen? Not that I got ahead of the word. I ain't getting ahead of myself, you know? So, okay, let's keep it going. Verse 10 through 12. Not only that, but Rebecca's children were conceived at the same time by our father Isaac. Yet before the twins, because uh, Isaac and Rebecca, remember I said the twins, Jacob and Esau, yet before the twins were born or had done anything good or bad. Hear that? Yet before the twins were born or 
had done anything good or bad in order that God's purpose in election might stand, not by works by, but by him who calls, she was told the older will serve the younger. I told you the backdrop that he grabbed his, his, his brother's joint and he tricked him. Ooh, the spirit just gave that to me. So I'm not sure. So let me just tell you a little bit. We, we didn't stay on this long, right? So everybody know a mother's love, right? Um, I go through it. I have, I have four children's mothers, right? And um, nature does it. A mother's love is deep. Go go hard. Even sometimes a mother love bypass rationality. Logic. It just do whatever it got to do to protect, right? So we're going to go right here. And I'm going to give you some of that. So, you know, like I said, Abraham had Sarah, Sarai. Isaac was his son, had Rebecca. Esau was their kids. Now, there's always more descendants. When God has so many, but sometimes they just focus. We're focusing on the ones in here. So Esau, the twins, had Esau and Jacob. Jacob later married. Rachel, and that's how the offspring. But check this out. Not only that, but Rebecca's children were conceived at the same time by our father Isaac, making them twins. Yet before the twins were born, I had done anything good or bad. It had nothing to do with the kids. It has nothing to do with our kids sometimes. It has nothing to do with us sometimes. Because purpose and promise is already made that is going to proceed whatever we did. Sometimes we come out and I, as adults, we're still claiming stuff that has happened to us that had to fulfill a promise in order for us to come. Why did our parents leave us? Why did that happen? Because that caused pain and birthed us to become a better, I'm gonna be a better parent to this one. Why? Because I can affect, affect a better generation. So the father already had it lined up. If we don't know the word, we gonna think it's all on us. And we carried around PTSD. Instead of purpose, ain't no purpose Trouble-free syndrome. We got post-traumatic. But let's stay here. Let's talk, let's talk about a mother's love. Not only that, but Rebecca's children were conceived at the same time by our father, Isaac, yet before the twins were born or had done anything good or bad, dig it, in order that God's purpose in election might stand. That's why he said, my word will not return back to me void. So he already had it in plan for it to be in motion, not by works, but by him who calls. She was told the older would serve the younger. Now, why did I say that again? Because as they got older, when I said that the firstborn get a birthright and they get blessings and before they die, they go to the father because Isaac, the father has to bless them with the birthright and you to come there and Esau was a, a hunter and a gather and they called him Red, right? Because he liked the, so he served, he, 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 before I, let me get ahead of myself. Because he was out there hunting and gathering, making sacrifice before his dad go. And Jacob was different. He was with his mom. His mom was boy. And his mom, uh, they she helped him out. Helped him trick his brother into getting the birthright for a bowl of soup. Because he loved it. He loved how he prepared it. That red stew. And tricked him and said, man, you want you to learn? You want you to get in here. But he ain't do it on his own. His mother had He had help by his mother. But that deception with his mama that tricked his brother into for Stu to get the birthright. And they, and you, that's why his name came, already had to do it to fulfill God's way because he said that before they did anything good or bad. It set in motion. And he told the mother that the older was served. So I'm wondering if he told her, was she carrying that thought the whole time? Or was that the, once you hear the word of God, you're not going to, because if I hear the word of God and say that and it goes against it, I'm going to say I, me personally, I try to disprove it sometimes. Well, before, because I, I don't play with them no more. But just, man, you I don't know how that's gonna come out. I'm gonna try to go against that. That's not gonna happen. Cause you say that the the, for the lower surface. This is before Jesus, that 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 the, the the first become the least. This was literal. So that was out of context and out of culture. No one does that. But God had it in motion. So again, sometimes things are occurring that he already placed based on his promises and purpose, right? Amen? We move on. That's newborns. That's babies. We into toddlers. And this is early instructions. Early instructions. Let's get into Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verses 18 through 21. Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands 
and bind them on your foreheads. Some people have tattoos everywhere. You see how we doing it. We'll do that. But oh, I got I do have in God I trust. So I ain't gonna trip. Not that you know what I mean, but we do that. But he was told to do something different. Teach them to your children. Talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. That's basically all day. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates so that your days and the days of your children may be in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors as many as the days that the heavens are above the earth. Of course, in context, he's speaking to them literally for them because those were his people. But remember, we are his people people and the land he chose to give us is not there in the kingdom of, of heaven it is also here on earth we have land we are supposed to have land we don't have to always own it we have land and he said he wants to give us land not just ownership of the land when we walk around we may not possess the land that you are living in but by gosh with the god's hand you can go right around there he can give you that land to do his work until it you got to understand sometimes we can't be literal but you can be living in relativity off of the word of God and it can meet you where you are. And then he said what? Now remember, that was hinging. All that getting land, all that sound, because we always want a reward. But he said to teach these to the kids. How many of us are doing that what he said? To teach these to the kids, children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down and get up all day. And if we're not doing that, let's not expect all the land and all that stuff all the time, Okay. Psalm chapter 78, verses 1 through 6. Psalm 78, verses 1 through 6. My people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth with a parable. I will utter hidden things, things from of old, things we have heard and known. Things our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders he has done. He decreed, excuse me, he decreed statues for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children. So the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born, and they in turn will tell their children. Then they will put their trust in God and will not forget his deeds, but will keep his commands. Amen. These are early instructions. So when we when we play our part and tell them, we won't see it because he said generations and generations. You didn't know how it was going to be there. Abraham didn't see that. We don't always see it. But if we don't be the ones to do it, no one else will see it either. How about that? Because it ain't just for us to see, it's for the world to see. Psalms chapter 103, verse 13. Okay, what are you talking about? Security. Not right now. Psalms 103, verses 13. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. As a father has compassion on his children, so remember. Woo, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. I don't, I was about to go personal. Um, and I don't, again, I don't want to stay too far. And, uh, you know, my sister, one of my sisters is here. You know, our father uh, has passed. I was 97. You know, a lot of respect and love. And people have heard me talk about it. He wasn't noticeably compassionate. I, I don't, one statement in my pocket, I'm the only boy, right? And I have four sisters that are younger than me. So I keep it a thousand on everybody, truthfully, myself and my family. I don't check on my pops. He tell me, man, you call a spade is a spade. And if he was here, I'd tell him to his face. I'd tell my grandmothers, everybody, because I got some of these principles from my daddy, right? He Before I knew the word of God, per se, that was in me already, excuse me, Lord. But he's telling me, yo, yo, love is an action word. People be talking, man, love is an action word, man. They got to show you love them. I, that's how I'm, I'm oh, I don't want to hear none of that, right? He used to drop jewels. 
but he crossed the line of disciplinary and we haven't got the yet. Yeah, that'll be next, right? Of disciplinary and in, into abusive, egotistical, great intentions, helped us out, hurt a lot. It's a borderline. Again, we're going to get there. It's a borderline. But it wasn't compassion. So although they could be disciplined, it still should be compassion. Why should there be compassion, Doc? Because you got beat a lot of time. Why? Because your sister. No, because my God said it should be compassion until a father. Like he will say some other stuff. And if my father heard it and didn't pay attention. Let's not speak on that. Because he's raising some anointed children. He was responsible for some anointed children. God be the glory. Tawana, Ladina, Dakina, Avery just passed it down to us. He's raising some anointed. He was responsible. My father passed at 37. Had an accident at 35 that paralyzed him. Owned his own crib. Bought it at 29. My sister, the supervisor, state he worked in the same state. God be the glory. Parenting. But was he parenting fully with God? Was he taken early because of that? I don't say that. Was he taken early because uh, he didn't show compassion? I don't say that. That's not for me to say. I take what I got from it, what I didn't get from it, and I use it to listen to the word of God, to pour into my children, and I'm going to treat it like it happened like that. So I pray to be compassionate on my children, and I pray that you be compassionate on your children and fear the Lord so we can receive compassion from him. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 6. Let's make sure, Proverbs, excuse me, Matthew 19. That's another one. Matthew 19, the New Testament, verses 13 through 14. Matthew 19, verses 13 through 14. Well, this is the Lord Jesus speaking to the people. Then people brought little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples, the followers, rebuked them. So people were bringing kids to the Lord. He's speaking to adults. And he's like, get up out of here. Get the kids up out of here. What the Lord said? The Lord said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. But notice he says, such as these. There's other words that's going to, you got to get deep in it. Because he was talking about them literal. Don't deny them. But such as these, when you come to me like we're doing tonight as a child, come to me. Because that's the kingdom of heaven is for you. Those who come childlike upon the altar. I don't care how old you are. God be the glory. One of my aunts is here. My aunt Susan, she's on there. And finally going to ask my nan and sister. I was just talking about her sister. I, tell you, I talk about everybody. Because I don't got no problem. But she's a child to my Lord. She's his child. And I wouldn't be out of pocket talking to my Aunt Susan, who I love dearly, and remind her as a brother if she didn't hear the word of our father. Because her earthly father was my papa. This was my papa, my great grandpa. God be the glory. My Aunt Teresa gave this to me. Look at this. I don't wear jewels no more. I don't carry nothing. And people look at my little baby chain. And I went to the uh to the surgeon. And I almost, I almost went under the old Lord. Yo, can you take this off? I said, I ain't taking nothing off. It means something to me. Man, she gave it to me. It'd be, it be messing with me. It's, it's real. But I, it's old. Yeah, but it's probably 19. We're probably, uh, uh, it's probably 1920. So. But it's my great grandfather had faith with this. The parenting came down because why I am a child. So sometimes I rub on the faith that my great grandfather had just to get through it to reach my grandchildren. What do you say from generation to generation? Amen. Told you I don't want, I ain't gonna make it too personal, but I'm gonna be transparent. Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Ephesians chapter 6, 
Verse one through four, very powerful coming up, some instructions, early instructions. Chapter six, verse one through four. Children, obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. Before we move on, okay, I don't want to say everybody because Sarai is on here and that's my bonus daughter, mom, you know. So um, outside of that, I'm not sure who else, right? So, but um, again, oh, excuse me, I, I'm sorry. I might have got off track. We all are children. I was about to say just like like declassify her, like you know, because I'm speaking to literally no other child. But for, for the children, obey your parents in the law. Are we still children? So we still gotta obey our parents. And it's hard. But remember what I said about that. Sometimes we want some of the word to work for us. Sometimes we want most of the word to work for us. But when we get to that one or two verses of them scriptures, that that, that oh man, I ain't read that one. I ain't say that one. You you, you just happen to have a bathroom break on that one. You're going to jump past that. When he say that, I'm not going to hear that again. You want to deny the Lord. But he said, children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. That's what the Lord calls us to do. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with the promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth for years. And I'm, I'm getting a little better with my biological mom, BL, right? Who, again, is my aunt's daughter. Um, because of our trauma, my sisters are who on here because Moon may be on it, but you know, I don't I, I don't do step, right? I don't do that. I have two moms, but this is for clarification, right? Because first of all, my mother raised me. And that was my first example of the Lord Jesus. I promise you, I love him. It's not no of my kids, I love them to death, and it's hard to like uh, differentiate, but my mother, and I have two mothers, but I don't I'll be a lie to say that I love my biological mother in my heart the way I do my mama, because my, my biological mother had caused a lot of trauma. Whatever choices, I was still a child that we're still dealing with, but the Lord told me still to honor her. So right now at 46, I still got to check up on her. I still got to make sure she's good. There still may be something in here that's in it, but I still have to love her. I didn't say I don't love her. I said I had to grow into that. There were years where I disrespected her when I got back with her years, when, and that was because I was a violent man. Oh, Lord knows. But especially with her and man, because it was all that nasty, festered, uh, unparenting that I didn't get. But just because I didn't get it, I couldn't give it. So I, at the same time, she may not have did what she supposed to do, but I'm now breaking the commandment too. But the thing about that part is no one showed me the commandment. That's why it's not ignorance ain't bliss, but as you hear it now, you're not going to walk away and say you never heard this unless you did go to the bathroom because you may not have heard it before, but you heard what the word said to us now. And we are accountable for that. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with the promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Maybe our life ain't enjoyable because of that. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Make them mad if you don't exasperate, angry. Instead, bring them up in the training and instructions of the Lord. Amen? We're talking about toddlers, getting early. You know, that, that baby, not the baby. You know, bring them up. Instructions and training of the Lord. Colossians chapter 3, verse 21. Fathers, again, ladies, sisters, not speaking, not, and I actually asked the Lord, well, not asked him, but in the spirit was looking for something particular, but he told me, use what I give you. you know, I don't want you to feel left out like the word was told, but you always remember that contextual when they write in, um, in, in, in Hebrew and um, in, in Jewish, authentic Jewish society, the male was, and like it should be, in order, right? And that's why it, some people have the pride, but it was the father and the creation of, you know, the man. And then from the rib later on. And that's the order. That's why the man will answer to him first. And the woman will answer as well. And then the children. So a lot is turned because the man in God's eyes, especially marriage, is responsible for his household. You're not woman or mother, um, auntie, uh, sister, unless you in there by yourself. And really then, if you're in there by yourself, remember you weren't created to be by yourself. You just by yourself right now by whatever the journey is. Because really you're unfulfilled. And sometimes if you were a woman, I ain't saying you are right now, but I mean, speaking nothing, I don't care who it is. If you were a woman, you're still unfulfilled. You're not fully there because it's not the right way. And if you're disrespecting your mother, you're not the right way. If you're disrespecting your father, you're not the right way. But if you are a mother and a father, 
baby daddy, baby mama, girlfriend, y'all living inside like I tell my daughter and her boyfriend, with baby father, my I can't call him son-in-law yet, right? Because they're not married, but he got my two grandkids and, and good young man. We, we got our differences out early. It was going to be the prayer of the pistol. Got that out quick. So we do prayer. And I pray over him, good young man, right? And, 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 and But he's responsible. So although I try to give to my daughter, I got to stay on top of him because he's responsible for that part of his household. So that's why it says, fathers, do not embitter your children. Do not make them sad or they will become discouraged. Remember, that's why it's got to go back down the stages, right? So remember what we just talked about early instructions. We got to do some of these things or do all of these things because there is promises and purposes implemented and instilled from the womb. That's why we have to follow. But here we go. We're on stage three. This is, what, this is what I was saying. This is what I'm sad. Yesterday's sad right now. And I was like, God, God I was about to skip a, skip a stage. It's preteen. Here comes the pain. That's what this one is called. Here comes the pain. Again, like I said, my children, 24, 22, 22, 17, about to be 18. 12, be 13 this year, and 10, she'd be 11, then the grandkids, right? And my 12 and 10 year old, my 10 year old lives in South Carolina. My 12 is around, I'm not there with her all the time right now. And I'm feeling a lot of that pain, but I'm not making it personal. We're just talking about the stages because some of that pain will happen whether you're there or not. Remember this. And it was hard for me to see it, but because I'm not there, I'm wearing it. But just like myself, even if you have a mother and father in the house, even if you have a, a, a stable home, even if you brought up in the word of God, even if your parents went to church, even if you would do that, ain't going to save it. I didn't say this was going to save it. I didn't say this was going to make everything great. I didn't say my father would have lived. I just said that's what the word said. But there's still stuff that's going to occur because uh, Isaac and Rebecca knew the Lord. Obviously, the Lord knew to speak to him. But she still did something different. They still brought him up in God. Most of us be brought up in God's way and still do something different because it all will work out together. That's why you got to know Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good according to God's purpose or according to those who love God. So everything, when you love God, you see it his way. That everything that happened that wasn't supposed to happen, we couldn't stop from happening, works together for you. Glory be to you. And if you haven't said that yet, you're still thinking about you. And that means you don't really know him as much as you should. But that's the type of word that holds us on when we ain't got it together. That's the type of word that'll hold us when we ain't do it right. That's the type of word when we, when we can't do it again. And we have to believe, but we ain't there yet either. Here comes the pain. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24. Proverbs 13, verse 24. Whoever spares the rod hates their children. But the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. Amen. But do you hear the verbiage? Although the translation, and, and God broke me from this father because I am not Hebrew. I am not, I, I do, I read some Hebrew or understand some Hebrew, I should say. I don't speak any Aramaic. I don't speak Greek. Oh, I don't speak Latin. I don't speak the earliest. African, you know, that's why some get it twisted, like like the Greeks and the Romans got the translation. I have to remember that the, the they had the word of God out there first. Now, you know what I'm saying? It was it wasn't written in that language, but the word was out. There. That's why they were reading it because that's what the Jews was. Lord, let's not get off topic. What I'm saying to you is, the words that we have here in translation, we have to take them for what they are. So pay attention. Remember, I was speaking a little bit about that. Respect and all that. I still tell him with reverence and love for his name, but I tell the truth because now that I understand there, like yesterday, I was so enraged when the school called me with the description of what my daughter was up to. My little girl, right? Hurts. But I had to pull over and I, and I, and I, and I, I not only am I transparent, but I'm emotional from sisters and things but that's a part of who i am right part of my love and i always tell you don't ever get it twisted and people did it because by the time you see me maybe crying or something if you ever got it twisted you were twisted <laughs> father forgive us but that being said i was so irate and mad and it was i can see it like running in my head i can see like this i can see 
misplaced anger and it can go anywhere. That's why I try to get away from people because I'm mad at her mother. I'm mad at her for her actions, but more importantly, I'm mad at me for not being there. And, and I can't say it like, oh, God, oh my God, but you. If you discipline somebody in that, it's over. And you know who did? My dad. Discipline when I broke his rule. Discipline, you cannot discipline a child out of emotion and anger. You will overdo it. That's why the word didn't say not to. He said, whoever spares the rod hates their children. You got to love them. But the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. I see you, curls. Oh, you've been there? Look inside. See, God, glory be to God. I see you. I'll give you a little shout out. I don't break the word for too many people, but glory be to God. Now let's get back to the word. Whoever spares the rod hates their children, but the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. So discipline is necessary, but so is carefulness. And remember, so is compassion. More importantly, so is guidance. You know, what should I do, Lord? Because I'm about to bust a hole in the whole side of the school. But if I do it, I will ruin. So my prayer is before I can talk to her, her and she called me yesterday, and this is my first time speaking to my 12-year-old and couple, and she talked and she couldn't say nothing. And I'm I'm so hurt. And she's uh, I know I know I should say something to you, but I don't know what to say. Well, call me back when you can. I can't have that talk, but the Lord told me maybe not now, but I need to stay emotionally and spiritually connected to my daughter because when I say I can't, and if I say that for good, the enemy get his credit. So just because you may not be able to now, do not forsake what you call because we still have to parent with God. Even when we see here comes the pain. Proverbs chapter seven, verse six through seven. Seven, verse six through seven. Excuse me. I'm gonna go all the way up to the top. I'm gonna go all the way up to the top. Since we all adults here, you know, we all grown. I can, I can talk about this. My son, keep my words and store up my commands within you. Keep my commands and you will live. Guard my teachings as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister. Into insight, you are my relative. They will keep you from the adulterous woman, literal and figurative, from the wayward woman with her seductive words, the worries of the world, remember that, tantalizing, tempting, and all that good stuff that we used to. But wisdom and insight shall keep us from that. Why? At the window of my house, I look down through the lattice, I saw among the simple, I noticed among the young men, a youth who had no sense. <laughs> Would you rather be the unidentifiable youth with no sense or the one in the window looking at them? Or would you rather become the one who seen from the window and looked and ran after? But that's a whole nother way. That's a whole nother way. I don't want to go too far. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 18. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 18 first. Discipline your children, for in that there is hope. Do not be a willing party to their death. And if we know the word, Romans 6, 23 say, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of life is Christ Jesus. Eternal life is through Christ Jesus our Lord, right? But death and spiritual is separation from God. Death in the body is transition to where we go, where he claims we're not speaking on that. Death in this is separation from God. So discipline your children, for in that there is hope. Do not be a willing party to their death, to their sin, to their separation from God. Speak up. Right? And what's that I have over there support? Verse 26. Whoever robs their father and drives out their mother is a child who brings shame and disgrace. Whoever robs their father, curls on here, God be the glory. But we're about to make it personal. You might have to stay out for it. But we, we did a lot of stuff. 
You know what I'm saying? Together, me and a lot of, and, and I ain't said we robbed, we, we didn't rob, but you know, we did stuff like that. But whoever robbed their father, you can't do that. Why? A child who brings shame is a disgrace. So when you living out there and when a child is, you don't foresee it. That's why it's important to be parents with God so we can know the word, so we can point out what this really do. Because we've been that. I've been that child on the corner hustling and all that. People still loved you, but you bring disgrace to your family. Oh, ain't that ain't, ain't that ain't that Esther, ain't that Esther grandchild over there? Oh, that's my father. Just Negro, you get over. He ain't say Negro. I'm being polite. Boy, listen here. Yeah, white meat. That's what he called it. White meat. You bring disgrace upon like they, and that's how I felt yesterday. That's personal, right? And that's why I said it was connected. To, it felt like a shortcoming because I'm like I didn't raise you right. And although it was my Zaya, because although we divorced. I haven't been there physically every day for the last five years or so, right? So she's 12 at seven. That's when it happened. But every day before that, you know, I was working, whatever. But me and her still like this. She's getting a little older. But I'm like, yo, I didn't raise you. How you up there? Wow, I didn't raise you. It didn't hit me. Man, you, you're not really there all the time, bro. Gosh. You're not giving her the word the way you're supposed to. Gosh. I can sit like this, or the Lord can lift me up and come in here and say, deliver a message, but remember that the message is for the messenger first before the audience. So I don't gotta be like this because I'm a king. And my daughters and my sons one day were going to feel it. My daughter who got my grandkids probably gonna go like this. And if I don't know how it feels to go like this and lift my head up, then I can't parent my child. When I see her like this, I might just go over there and join her like this. But I got to be able to tell my children, nah, yeah, I know what it feels like that. But you ain't from that. You got a promise and a purpose from your womb. You lift it. If no one else lifts you up, you do this. You do this with the spirit of God. You do this and keep it pushing. You fix your crown and remember your purpose. I'm equipped to do that now because I'm parenting with God. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 15. 22, 15. Folly, foolishness, is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline will drive it far away. Now, I do believe, because again, my father was no, he was raised, my, my, my grandma, like, this isn't Nana, but this is my, my, my grandma, grandma Darren, and my granddad was gone. You know what I'm saying? Like he knew the Lord. Don't get to we used to go. He used to, we used to go to church. I used to go to church with dad. He used to bring. He worked at the state. He used to bring the patients. He was a face. And they had the helmets on and all that. And I think I'm lying. I got cousins. They used to bang heads. We be in there. That's why I was a little crazy. I'm riding there with the patients. You should, my father had us on the same bus going to church with the patients from the state. And listen, he prepared me for jail in the mental hospital as a boy. I knew the Lord, but I also knew these crazy patients and how to be in the discipline. I was ready for the jailhouse and they do banging their heads in the window and said, Billy Bob is sitting next to me. I'm horrible to tell him about the Lord. He biting people and killed two, three people. But I could have sworn he, my father knew this. He probably, this probably was his favorite. You know how some of us have our favorite verses? I just quoted a couple off my heart. My father probably was folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline will drive it far away. I think that might have been his favorite. Yeah, that was the better. Proverbs twenty two fifteen was tatted in his heart. And he probably said, I'm following. You told me to meditate on your word day and night and think about it. And that's his favorite. And he bust my behind. And my sisters, too. I ain't going to let you get away, T. He bust out behind with the, probably the word. I hope he did. At least it was some good. Let's move along. Proverbs chapter 23, verses 13 through 14. Do not with, withhold discipline from a child. You hear, you hear the, not redundancy, you hear the, the compound interest, not in paper, the compound interest of the Lord, his interest in what we should do. Do not withhold discipline from a child. If you punish them with the rod, they will not die. Punish them with the rod and save them from death. Amen. And that's what I can say. That's why I said I have to be transparent because despite my description of it i'm sh it was for a purpose again because like we we grew up we respected it was for a purpose because i was wayward that was everything he was told this was me and although i deserved it it was a thin line but without it i would have been totally lost it's god forbid 
and that I didn't have a parent where I wouldn't have been a mental, because I'm not lying to a psychopathic, or excuse me, because I'm intelligent, a sociopathic murderer. God forbid that I had my, I, I would have turned into a, um, a insane, a, a dead um, a drug dealer, gun dealer, a, 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 a crack hustler at the age of 22 that the feds didn't give me that that 10 year to, to cop out to that somebody could have smoked me down there in Virginia I'm going back to the street we're not talking about the law we're talking about getting smoked because I was 22 out here with my family running Rico type stuff out here right doing that type of behavior not because I didn't have a father and mother not because God didn't love me but because this folly stored up in the heart and he did put the rod but sometimes it didn't matter why because there was still a purpose so how do I, I mention my dad, but I don't blame my dad. So some of you parents mention your shortcomings, but don't blame yourself. Because all of it will work together for good, even the things that are out of our control. Malachi chapter four, verse four through six. Malachi chapter four, verses four through six. Remember the law of my servant Moses the decrees of the Lord that gave him at Horab for all Israel. See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. Before that day come, I'll send the prophet Elijah to you. He will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the children to their parents. Or else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. He will turn the hearts of them. So listen to what he says. He was always trying, God was always telling his children to remember and be reconciled with me. That's what it's all about, relationship. That's why he said, if you love the Lord your God and have no other God above him, and then love your neighbor um, or you love yourself, and you do these, you fulfill my commandments, love, right? He loved them. He loved the children, his true descendants. He loved the ones he all created love. God is love. Relationship. So he always was offering a way to get back. Punishment, get back. Man, I don't want to, man, you get punishment. Boom, that's where we get up to Jesus, right? But this was his people. He said, remember this, man. I'm going to give you a prophet before this destruction comes. Try to take one more time since somebody to speak to you. Turn the parents back to their children and the children back. How do you turn something back to them if they're not already against them? Some of us are already against our parents, living against God. So remember, the Lord is still looking. I don't care who we are. I don't care if it's me, my sister, my sisters, my, my I don't matter. My God said I, he will turn, he sent somebody to speak to turn their children back because we're responsible. Especially if you want a long life, joy here, honor thy father and mother. That's why the words connect. Let's keep going. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 through 11. I, I think I like this one, I remember. Not that I don't like no, any of them, but I think that this one touched me a little bit. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? It says... My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines the one he loves and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate. Not true sons and daughters at all. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of spirits and live? They disciplined us for a little while as they thought best. Amen. But God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. 
Now, if that word hasn't touched you or hasn't thought about you as being a parent or even being a child, then I'm sorry, your soil needs to be churned. You need to get rid of your rocks and put something on them weeds. You're not fertile. That's a great understanding what the Lord was telling us and how it goes. I understood the dilemma of not wanting to hurt my children and punish whether it was my boys or my daughters out of anger or stuff. But if I let it slip, it would never lead to a harvest of righteousness for my God. She will become, I will be a witness to death. So even if I had to bust her behind and they said, you bust they behind, you going to jail. Well, I'm going to say, send me to jail because I'd rather be in your jail than be in my Lord's prison. I will be free to follow him. If that's what lay, and I'm not saying, like I said, he was speaking raw because that's how they discipline. What I mean right now, it ain't just you got to beat it. It's about discipline. And discipline comes in, what's the best way to reach your child? What is the best way to be reached? And remember, the Lord is still disciplined us. And it may be painful, but it will produce the harvest of righteousness for us. Glory to God. So we just covered promises and purposes from the womb, early instructions. That's the toddler stage. Here comes the pain at preteen. We're moving along a little bit, brothers and sisters. We are now kind of letting them go. And this is called parenting by faith, the teenage time, right? And a lot of that is now we're seeing it in our society, our culture, especially here since we're all here in America, how everything has sped up so fast. Even for me, I don't know, I'm coming from the streets and coming off the porch, regardless of my spiritual upbringing or going to church off the porch at 14 with my cousins and a little bit of hustling. Everybody hustling, doing anything, but we putting in work and doing all that. You know, it, it, I'm scared. Cause we ain't really start getting gangster gangster for a couple of years. We were still getting picked on a little bit. <laughs> we put a little work and we were tough. These kids out here ain't tough, but they will snuff. They off the porch. These girls was having babies soon as the period start. Why was I scared about my daughter? Because this is a little bit different. Yeah. It was already coming decline. But the Lord says that in First Timothy, excuse me, Second Timothy 1, 7, that the for God did not give us a spirit of timidness, of fear, but one of power, love, and self-discipline, a sound mind. So I got to go back to the word. I got to parent by faith and not be scared even if I see something that looks like it. Like Psalm 23 says, if you got to get into that, with, with, with David, with the psalm of David said, although ye had walked through the shadow of the valley of death, I, that always stood out to me. For two reasons. He said, I walked through the shadow, which a shadow isn't necessary. The actual thing is following it. And it looks like the actual thing. And if you pay attention, you remember some people get scared by their own shadow because it looks like it, but it ain't. And he said, I walked through the shadow of the valley of death. It looked like death, but it ain't. But he said, I walked through. He didn't say, I walk and stop in the shadow of the valley of death. He said, I walked through the shadow of the valley. That means you got to go through it. So even if it's looking like it in my children's eyes, like again, like my sister reminded me how I remind myself, God, I know from my aunts, I know from my grandmothers, I know from my father who tried to beat it out of me, I know from my mothers who may have prayed for me, I know from my other mother who wished it for me and loved me, I know from my family, it looked like it was over with. I know that when I kept going in and out of jail, I know when I went to jail for a year, I know when I got that 10 years since, I knew it looked like it was over with. It looked like death. It was a shadow. Glory be to God, I walked through. Because some of the early instructions were imparted. Some of the promises and purpose was already inside of me to walk through. So therefore, I got to see in my children not where they at now and meet them just now. I got to see what was already put inside of them from before in order for me to believe. In order for you to believe. Parenting by faith. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 1 through one through two, excuse me. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse one through two. Lord, love the Lord your God and keep his requirements, his decrees and his laws and his commands always. 
Remember today that your children were not the ones who saw and experienced the discipline of the Lord your God, his majesty, his mighty hand, his outstretched arm. Remember today that your children were not the ones who saw and experienced the discipline of the Lord your God. Why we got to implement and impart these things? Because they may not know it already. But we witnessed something. And it's upon us to bring that upon them. Amen? Proverbs chapter 3, verse 12. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 12. Because the Lord disciplined those he loved as a father, the son he delights in. Well, excuse me, let me give you 11. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the sons he delight in. Yes, so praying by faith, you got to understand that. So, so we cannot, like I said, do not despise it, do not think about it. Even us, we're praying by faith. We have to parent, excuse me, parent by faith. If you don't know this word, if you don't see it, you will think less of yourself. You would think your method isn't. But if it's tied to the word of God and you are believe upon the word of God, you shouldn't have a, uh, what you will get, it will try to come against you. But you know that even if you don't see it, it is with the Lord asking. And that is called parenting by faith. Not relying upon your own understanding, not relying upon my own understanding, uh, not relying upon our own intelligence, but praying to get to know the wisdom of God, to parent by God, and to believe in faith how to do so. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1 through 13. Listen. Listen, my sons. Excuse me. Let me get some of my tea. Listen, my sons, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. I give you sound learning, so do not forsake my teaching. For I too was a son to my father, still tender and cherished by my mother. Then he taught me and he said to me, take hold of my word with all your heart. Keep my commands and you will live. Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget my words or turn away from them. Do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Though it cost you all you have, get understanding. Cherish her and she will exalt you. Embrace her and she will honor you. She will give you a garland to grace your head, like a crown tight, and present you with a glorious crown. Listen, my son, accept what I say, and the years of your life will be many. I instruct you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered. When you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. How many of us heard that before from a, a parent or not a preacher, not a pastor or anything, a parent? How many of us are willing to believe this and willing to share this with our child? Screen tap it, send it to him. You can't speak it. Audio it. Read it out loud. Not thinking that they won't understand it. How many of you would take a chance to parent by faith? And again, especially my dear sister, who we just remembered, my lovely nephew, who is his first year of transition, and we celebrated his birthday, and we remembered him at 29. I know without knowing, of course, right? But I know my sister, but I also know people, and I know without knowing how it feels, of course, but that was her one and only. Love her son, right? So how could this word apply to my sister? Yes, it can apply to my sister. Does it apply? Yes, it applies to her. That was her birth. So that was her physical son, but she is still a mother to other God. That's why we throw away that term, God. Child. That's my God. Child. You better know God before you have another child that didn't come from your womb. Because that child 
by that title is dependent on you to give them God. Don't give them any kind of God. Give them the most high, El Shaddai, Lord Yahweh. Give them him. If you're going to give them somebody, you may give them the world. So remember, we all are still a parent in some form, a big brother, a sister in some form. Amen. We're going to go to the next part. What's that? Proverbs 4. Now we're in uh, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 1. A wise son heeds his father's instructions, but a mocker does not respond to rebukes. Again, I played that part myself. You know, I was, I could never say that I was a wise son then because I rebuked what he was saying. I wasn't trying to hear it. And then we see where it gets that because again, no matter if he, my father or our parents may have or may not have been there or did what they could or could not have done. We still got an answer for what we have been led to. Let's say that they did try to say something, but we may not have respected them because they wasn't there. Yo, man, you gonna tell me something you haven't been there? But if they did try it, the Lord could have spoke to them right then, and we disrespected it. We got to an answer. Proverbs chapter fourteen, verse twenty-six. Whoever fears the Lord has a secure fortress, and for their children it will be a refuge. Woo. Psalms 91 is one of my favorites, uh, especially during that, that virus corona thing jumping off when I was with my nana. I, I, I may have told a story. I couldn't, I, I'm taking care of help being around my nana, being there with her and all that. So I couldn't, she brought it to me, but I, I couldn't walk away because I told you, I, I remember they said, you you got to be, what they call that term? Um, What's that term they were using for only people can go outside? Uh, you only can be, if you were dang it's it all with an e right now i'm sorry i usually good at that it'll come back to me but only certain people can be outside uh, uh, uh if you wasn't necessary to be out there then you need to be at home and i had to get money to get so i, I consider myself in that category so i had to be out there but it, it could drive you crazy if you out there especially my my aunt my my cousin my uncle peppy and they was in the hospitalized um, through that COVID. So you see stuff happen, you're like, man, I, I can't go through. You got a little fear. But I had to read, I was so much protected more by that Psalms 91 because you could do everything you wanted right and, and be and think you protected. And then one little thing you slip up and you bring in that, you're like, oh my God, I got you sick. And, and, man, listen, I'm going to go out there with the Lord's covering and believe upon them Psalms. Not saying it can't happen. I pray that it's not. And you cover me from the foul snare. You said a thousand will die on your left hand and 10,000 at your right, but you'll witness the, the, the dependence of the wicked and, and nothing will harm you by day. Now, I had to believe that, but I got to get out there at work. Essential. <laughs> I couldn't get to work. I was an essential worker. Still am. So I'm looking at this. Because if when it starts off, Psalm 91 says, those who dwell in the shelter of the Most High. You have refuge. I believe that. So I'm believing in Proverbs 14. Whoever fears the Lord, I do, has a secure fortress. Cool. But, oh, excuse me, and for their children, it will be a refuge. Even if they're not, they're knowing. So the, the fortress that the Lord God has on me is not just because I fear him. It helps my children. My children ain't here, but they still up under his refuge. Through my fear, reverence for my Lord. So sometimes it's necessary or imperative for you to be in alignment with God even if your children not and if you want them back or covered when they are things going crazy myself included I gotta revere him and respect him first Proverbs chapter 23 verse 24 23 verse 24 the father of a righteous child has great joy a man who fathers a wise son rejoices in him. May your father and mother rejoice. May she who gave you birth be joyful. We still can bring that to our parents, even if we are not receiving it from our kids. How about that? Right? Because being a parent doesn't stop us from being a child. So therefore, I may not have a righteous child, which I do. 
And I do, I have a son, like all of them, they bring me different, everybody's different. So I'm not saying that, even despite my daughter's situation, because I'm not impervious to this. But I have a son who's wise, my son Damari, and he follows in the word of God and he shares the word of God. And people are like, yo, Damari, you, and man, because he's about to be 18 and I've been through the word, been delivering it to him and his brother, but he's the one that caught it like for like four years, right? He sent it to me. Most of the time, to everybody, and they be like, "Yo, man, you did your thing." Raising, I said, "Nah, that's the spirit." No, yeah, but you do. You bringing him up in his training, and he's not biologically mine. But I've been raising him and his brother, and been in their life even after the divorce for fourteen years now. Still a father. Why? Because that's God kids, and they gave it to me. They were a reward to me when I came home. I didn't have my biological son. They were a reward for me to have it to do it again to pour into him. Because God said He put something in me to be a father, even when I didn't feel like one. So I got a wise son. I rejoice him. And I just told you about him. That's rejoicing. Sometimes you know the difference because if you got kids and you ain't mentioning them, you ain't rejoicing. I mean, he ain't doing that. This little knucklehead junk. I ain't nobody. How many kids you got? I, I ain't even have one. Yeah, this dude, 13 years old. You don't want to claim him. He done been, he done been in Gwinnett County seven times. Still got to love him. First Timothy chapter five, verse eight. First Timothy chapter five, Verse eight, anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Why is that in there? They ain't talking about kids. And it didn't say man. It said anyone who does not provide for their relatives. Well, he's, what's, what's providing? Did it say money? Did it say bills? It said provide. What are we talking about now? We're talking about providing the way of the Lord. We're talking about the teaching of God. What can we give them? Because the word, if you go right above it, it says, give these pe the people these instructions so that no one may be open to blame. So the Lord was speaking to us. And especially their own house. So sometimes we try to do, and that's what, and it, even myself included, we can do easily for everybody outside, but if we're not doing it within our own household, we are denying the faith and worse than the unbeliever. We have to start at home. Your own home, learning how to parent with God, learn how to be a child of God before you can go out. We covered so far uh, the promises and purpose from the womb, the newborn stage, the early instructions, the toddler stage, right? Here comes the pain. That's our preteen. We just discussed parenting by faith, which is teenagers. And we're going to surmise everything. We'll bring everything up in a conclusion category. And this is the word will lead them home. And this is the adult. This is us, them, the coming. But the word will lead them home. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 6. Proverbs 17, verse 6. Children's children are a crown to the age. And parents are the pride of their children. Children's children, like my grandchildren's, are a crown to the age when you're getting up. And parents are the pride of their children. When we get there, that word, those children, when you're there, one day, I, I, well, I'm, I keep grabbing this, my father's having it, salt and pepper now, right? I'm getting older. There was no way that you could have told me again I don't even want to foresee it. I mean, I started to calm down when I came home from the faith. I was still a little wild. But when we were young, there's no way you're going to talk about not just, well, I always wanted to be a parent. I was a parent. Like, that's why I accepted my role because I, I wanted to do it better. But they ain't talking about no grandkids. I'm over here, G Pop. I got my G Boy, my G Baby. I'm over there. They, I cover there. She covered there. And, 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 oh my gosh. Run up to me. She, she come, she tried to open up the door the other day. She's about to be three on the 20th. She see me through the thing. I'm going to go see my daughter. She run down there. I'm going to tell you like, and I used to door. She tried to open the door for me. Run outside. Do you know what that feels like? If you haven't yet, it's not about it. I'm not sharing. I'm not being so. I'm just sharing to you that when you age, that's the crown. So I have an opportunity, even if my daughter and them don't do it, to plant it in them. And then when you get even older and all oh, this is great, they come back. Not only are they running back, but they're going to be running back and bringing others with the word. That's what we're talking about. The word will lead them home. 
Matthew chapter 10, verse 34 through 38. Matthew chapter 10, verses 34 to 38. And the word says, Do not suppose that I have come to bring the Lord Jesus. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. He was talking to his disciples and those and those around the crowd. I did not come to bring peace. Although he's the prince of peace, right? But dig it. But a sword. I didn't come to bring peace. Girls, you love this one. But a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father. Hold up. Hold up. Before we go anywhere, we read early in the old when the when, when the prophet said they going, uh, 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 he said the prophet Elijah, Joel said the prophet Elijah, he going to bring the, the parent to the son and the son to the parent. What Jesus talking about, man? The opposite. We even, I, I had to stop. He talked the opposite. If you know who Jesus was, he said, I didn't ever, he took another verse. I did not come to uh, abolish the law. I came to fulfill it. This don't even look like fulfilling it. Why is he speaking? Because this is how he was showing who his family is and what he has come to do. Blood don't make us family in God's eyes. That word going to split families right on in half. That word will split my family right on in half. My, that word can divide my family today if it let it. I got cousins, my aunts, whoever, because it's in me. If my aunt got off and, yo, uh, did you hear him call, call my nana? Did you hear that talking about it? Let's say they was not believers. I will cut my aunt off. I will cut my grandmother off. I will cut my sisters off. Love you. I don't, that's not me. I, I know who my Lord is. It's still a struggle to separate, like I said, with my child. But I know one thing about it. I cannot let, if Abraham could then let Isaac come between him and God, and was the father of faith, I'm not going to let no Zaya, no, no Stella, none of my other kids, or and love him to death and would die. And, 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 and I learned about that. Not only would I die for him, I have to learn how to live for them. And that's more important. Because if I die for him, it stops. But if I live for them, I can pour into them. So therefore, I am going to not learn that even for them, that as they make choices, if they walk away, yeah, you pray for them, but the world going to split families. Why? Because the Lord said, what did he say? Let me keep going. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. That's what my Lord said. Amen. That's that. That's a different. That's a different type of love, right there. That's a different. That, that was. Oh, like I said, sometimes I, mean, I ain't gonna read that Matthew no more. I mean, I'm gonna skip that. No, no. That's what the Lord said. That's what He expects. Luke chapter 15, verse 11 through, before we get there, let me go to first, to use that state in order, let's go to first, because I want to end off with Luke. First Timothy chapter five, one through six. Do not rebuke an older man harshly, but exhort him as if he were your father. Treat younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, and younger women as sisters with absolute purity. Give proper recognition to those widows who are really in need. But if a widow has children or grandchildren, my grandmother, these should learn first of all to put their religion into practice by caring for their own family and so repaying their parents and grandparents for this is pleasing to God. Amen. The widow who is really in need and left all alone puts her hope in God and continues night and day to pray and to ask God for help. That sounds like my grandmother, my nana. My grandmother and father, grandma, nana, 83, she 92, still stepping out there, moving for the Lord, but alone lost my granddad, nana lost pop, but they still here. And that fit my criteria. So I'm called to be there for them. You're called to be there for them. Why? That's what the word of God says. But it also says, but the widow who lives for pleasure is dead even while she lives. Amen. So let's get ready to get into Luke chapter 15, 11 through 31 for our close out. And this is the word. This is really the um, 
Now this is about this is actually this is the uh the literal interpretation of the word will lead them home. Luke 15, 11 through 31. If you're not heard of this before, this is the prodigal son. The Lord Jesus was telling this parable. And it starts like this. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth and wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. Remember, this dude came from paper. He's feeling, he's feeding pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating. He wanted to eat their food, but no one gave him any. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they begin to celebrate. Meanwhile, the oldest son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him, what's going on? Your brother has come, he replied. And your father has killed the fattened calf because he has came back safe and sound. The older brother came Excuse me, the older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeying your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you killed the fat calf for him? My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Amen. What does that mean? My brothers and sisters, we are on this Wednesday's word study because I've been in the field with my Lord and unlike the brother in that parable, I don't have a angered or envious heart that my father has ran back to you, although I'm here with him every day. Because the fact that what that dude didn't say is he didn't remember that when he's with his father every day, he was still getting love and still being there. You don't have to fatten a, a, a calf. I'm here with you in concert. So... Brothers and sisters, my father's running to you because he sees you coming back to him tonight on word study, right? And I'm looking in joy that he's coming to you because I missed you as well. This is where we put a little twist to it. I missed you as well in the house of the Lord. I, I'm yelling far off, don't let dad run to you. Don't let dad get tired, beat him to the punch. 
Run back. If you see him running to you, run to him. What does running look like? Hanging up over here, picking up your word. Hanging up over here, learning how to pray. Hanging up over here, understanding how to look into it fast. It's hanging over here saying, I'm repent. Hanging up over here saying, yo, I'm twisted. I'm sitting here crying with no tears on my face. And I miss my dad. And I ain't talking about the one who you came from in sperm. And I ain't saying you miss your mother who you came from an egg. I'm talking about your creator, your maker, your father. And the beautiful thing is when you're parenting with God, again, you're a children of God, he misses you. So on closing and before prayer, I implore, I advise, I ask of you, to listen to the word of your Lord, listen to the voice of your father. If you want to become better parents, if you want to become better children, if you want to become better people, may the word of God and through wisdom and truth, not just the one spoken through me because I am nowhere near perfect and some things I may said have not, never been read, may not have registered to you. But I pray that it was enough of a seed that when you leave here or for this, you can grow and someone else can come by and water it. And I pray that that seed can grow into a good little branch on the tree and then you will have a fruit that someone else can come behind you and pick to eat. Because the fruit that we are to become, even in our own struggles, is not for us to be looked at. It is to be eaten by somebody else. So we will get ready to close out in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, why do I feel, or why does it seem shocked that I'm always more reinvigorated after the word is delivered than before the word was shared? Father, the message has helped to restore me a void in my heart. It is still there and it's still apparent, but Father God, I know the methodology to getting it um, uh, poured into. I know the methodology of getting it to be fulfilled and the only thing that can fill it is you. Father God, I pray that any voids or any absences or any, any lacks inside of my brothers and sisters who are your children today, despite their age, despite where they are, if they are new parents, if they are old parents, if they are grandparents, if they were old, parents of, of a child that's not here physical or if they are God parents, Father God, whatever they may be, I pray that your wisdom will lead them to be a better parent with connection to you. I pray that your Holy Spirit will redeem them through the repentance of their deeds and their sins. And I pray that through their belief upon the Son, that they will learn to get to deliver through the baptism of the water and to become cleanly enough to get the conviction of the Spirit to truly become a parent that is in cohorts and cahoots with you, walking each day to lead their children, looking forward to delivering their children the word, looking forward to even we don't see it, that the purpose is already understood because it's gonna glorify you. Father God, I pray for those on the Zoom tonight right now that the angels of protection will be upon them if they call upon you as to be the Lord and Messiah of their life. I pray that right now that they can have a personal altar call in their home or in their house or in their car that they can call upon you. If they never even mentioned your name, that they would do it, that there would be no shame in their voice, that they know that they have been stuck. I pray that you reveal all of our shortcomings, reveal all of our insufficiencies revealed all of our lacks so we know that we cannot do anything with or without you that will satisfy your kingdom i ask over the children the babies that are coming up the babies not born i pray over the purposes and promises instilled inside of each one of the children that are installed inside of each one of us i pray that they are revealed today in order for us to point it out to someone else and we thank you for the word that you give us we thank you for the power and the promises and we thank you for the faith to believe in such so before we leave, we give you honor, we give you praise, and we give you thanks for being the almighty God and for giving us a moment to come together in obedience. And I thank you for each one of the brothers and sisters that on a personal level for taking time out of their day to give reverence to you, to give opportunity to you just to learn more of your word. In the name of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray amen, amen, amen. Man, Lord be the God. You, um, before we close, we can you can unmute. Tawana, don't beat everybody. You know what I mean. Thankful to each one of you. Uh, any any uh, questions? Anything that we would like to talk before we depart? Oh oh oh! I, I think I think I pressed the button. You can't unmute yourself. I think I got you. Hold on hold on. Let me see. Yeah yeah, that was for Tawana. Now try it.
Wow. I was like, how did he yeah, add this one yeah. to you? I you know like, that? Hi, Curly. You know I, that? Mean, you know that? I love y'all so much. You know yeah. Oh, my God. Holla, Green. No, this, this is not Facebook. This is not Facebook. We still don't record. Love you, too. Love you, too. Oh, on, I see you. I haven't spoken in a while. I'm Susan. Thank you for joining us tonight. Amen. Thank you, Aunt Susan. Oh my gosh. You don't want to anybody want to say hi to me? Everybody, I'm you waiting. Know, doing, the, 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 this, everybody don't worry about don't worry about that. I, I meant to say she was a my toy significant. Everybody don't gotta be physical. I didn't say she's my physical sister. I said that I just love her and just because I don't even know that for sure. I'm not sure. We got I'll the try. same bloodline, straight in and straight I'll, out I'll money. Try, I'm trying to find where Turkey at. <laughs> hey, I, I might, I might be in line with you on that one, days. I don't know. Might Michael <laughs> Simpson. No, we're not. See, right. let me, come on, we on the court. Let me let me that that Mike. Like you, Dave. Yes, Amen. Like you. 